Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your guide to wisdom in creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our five-day-per-week wisdom and legacy-building podcast. We are broadcasting from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. This is day 968 of our trek, and time for our Philosophy Friday series. Each Friday, we will ponder some of the basic truths and mysteries of life and how they can impact us in creating our living legacy. As we continue on this trek that we call life, sometimes we have questions about life. So our Friday trek is a time where we can ask Gramps. Gramps will answer questions that you would like to ask your dad or granddad, but for whatever reason, this is not possible. No matter how old we are, I know that all of us would like the opportunity to ask dad or Gramps questions about life in many areas. Today is our 11th episode in a series delving into what makes each of us respond differently to life situations and circumstances. Understanding ourselves and how others may interpret life through their paradigm will allow us to interact with each other with more love and compassion. This empathy can be achieved by utilizing a profound tool called the Enneagram. If you have missed any of our past 10 Friday series, I would recommend going back and listening to them and reading the Wisdom Journals. As we review, the tool that we refer to as the Enneagram is a circle with nine interconnected points. Ennea referring to nine and Graham referring to a drawing. Check out today's or a prior week's Wisdom Journal for a representation of it. I have also included in today's Wisdom Journal a copy of the Enneagram at a Glance, which was compiled by Suzanne H. Eller. If you'd like a PDF copy of this, click on the link in today's Wisdom Journal located at the website at wisdom trekcom I would also recommend the book, The Road Back to You, written by Ian Morgan Cron and Suzanne Stavell. It is an excellent book about the Enneagram journey to a life of self-discovery from a Christian perspective. In the first seven episodes, we explored how the Enneagram system worked and then presented an overview of the nine personality types. So far, we have taken a deep dive into number one, the reformer, number two, the helper, and number three, the achiever. This week, we will explore type number four, which is the individualist. Next week, we will focus on type number five, the investigator. Since we are exploring the Enneagram in detail, I would recommend that you read the Wisdom Journal each Friday to see the diagrams presented each week. As helpful as the Enneagram is, though, we must keep in mind that it is still only a tool and cannot replace nor usurp the precepts that are found in God's Word. All of our decisions and actions that we make in life must be in harmony with God's precepts. So the question for the next several months will be, Hey Gramps, why do people act and react to situations and circumstances in life differently? How can I gain a better understanding and more wisdom about myself and others so that I can love, serve, and minister to them on a deeper level? So today we'll look at the Enneagram system, type number four, the individualist. The individualist is sensitive and an introspective type. They're expressive, dramatic, but may also be self-absorbed and temperamental. The type four in brief. Fours are self-aware, sensitive, and reserved. They are emotionally honest, creative, and personal, but they can also be moody and self-conscious, withholding themselves from others due to feelings of vulnerability and defectiveness. They can also feel disdainful and exempt from ordinary ways of living. They typically have problems with melancholy, self-indulgence, and self-pity. But at their best, they're inspired and highly creative, and they are able to renew themselves and transform their experiences. Type number four's basic fear is that they have no identity or personal significance. Their basic desire is to find themselves and their significance, to create an identity for themselves. An Enneagram four with a three wing becomes an aristocrat. An Enneagram four with a five wing becomes the bohemian. Their key motivations are they want to express themselves and their individuality to create and surround themselves with beauty and to maintain certain moods and feelings, to withdraw to protect their self-image, and to take care of their emotional needs before attending to anything else. They may also attract a rescuer. The meanings of the errors for a type number four. When moving in the direction of disintegration or stress, aloof force suddenly become overly involved and clingy like an unhealthy two. However, when moving in the direction of integration or growth, even envious emotional turbulent force become more objective and principle, like healthy ones. An overview of type 4. 
We have named this type the individualist because fours maintain their identity by seeing themselves as fundamentally different from others. Fours feel that they are unlike other human beings and consequently that no one can understand them or love them adequately. They often see themselves as uniquely talented, possessing special one-of-a-kind gifts, but they also see themselves as uniquely disadvantaged or flawed. More than any other type, Fours are acutely aware of and focus on their personal differences and their deficiencies. Healthy fours are honest with themselves. They own all their feelings and can look at their motives, contradictions, and emotional conflicts without denying or whitewashing them. They may not necessarily like what they discover, but they do not try to rationalize their states, nor do they try to hide them from themselves or others. They are not afraid to see themselves, warts and all. Healthy fours are willing to reveal highly personal and potentially shameful things about themselves because they are determined to understand the truth of their experience so that they can discover who they are and come to terms with their emotional history. This ability also enables fours to endure suffering with a quiet strength. Their familiarity with their own darker nature makes it easier for them to process painful experiences that might overwhelm other types. Nevertheless, Fours often report that they feel that they are missing something in themselves, although they may have difficulty identifying exactly what that something is. Is it willpower, social ease, self-confidence, emotional tranquility, all of which they see in others seemingly in abundance? Given time and sufficient perspective, fours generally recognize that they are unsure about this aspect of their self-image, their personality or ego structure itself. They feel that they lack a clear and stable identity, particularly a social persona that they feel comfortable with. While it is true that fours feel different from others, they do not really want to be alone. They might feel socially awkward or self-conscious, but they deeply wish to connect with people who understand them and their feelings. Fours are also referred to as the romantics of the Enneagram. They long for someone to come into their lives and appreciate that secret self that they have privately nurtured and hidden from the world. If over time, such validation remains out of reach, fours begin to build their identity around how unlike everyone else they are. They see themselves as the outsider. Therefore, they comfort themselves in becoming an insistent individualist. Everything must be done on their own, in their own way, and in their own terms. Ford's mantra becomes, I am myself. Nobody understands me. I am different and special. While they secretly wish that they could enjoy the easiness and confidence that others seem to enjoy. Ford's typically have a problem with the negative self-image and chronically low self-esteem. They attempt to compensate for this by cultivating a fantasy self, an idealized self-image which is built up primarily in their imaginations. An example of a four that we heard of shared that he invested most of his spare time listening to classical music while fantasizing about being a great concert pianist like Vladimir Horowitz. Unfortunately, his commitment to practicing fell far short of his fantasized self-image, and he was often embarrassed when people asked him to play for them. His actual abilities, while not poor, became a source of shame. In the course of their lives, Four may try several different identities on for size, basing them on styles, preferences, and qualities they find attractive in others. But underneath the surface, they still feel uncertain about who they really are. The problem is that they base their identity largely on their feelings. When fours look inward, they see a kaleidoscope, an ever-shifting pattern of emotional reactions. Indeed, fours accurately perceive the truth about human nature, that it is dynamically and ever-changing. But because they want to create a stable, reliable identity for their emotions, they attempt to cultivate only certain feelings while rejecting others. Some feelings are seen as me, while others are not me. By attempting to hold on to specific moods and express others, fours believe that they are being true to themselves. One of the biggest challenges fours face is learning to let go of feelings from the past. They tend to nurse wounds and hold on to negative feelings about those who have hurt them. Indeed, force can become so attached to longing and disappointment that they are unable to recognize the many treasures that they have in their lives. Lei is a working mother who struggled with these difficult feelings for many years, and this is how she described it. 
I collapse when I am out in the world. I have had a trail of relationship disasters. I have hated my sister's goodness. I hated goodness in general. I went many years without joy in my life, just pretending to smile because real smiles would not come to me. I have had a constant longing for whatever I cannot have. My longings can never be fulfilled because I now realize that I am attached to the longing and not to any specific end result. Here's another story from a man named Sufi that relates to this feeling about an old dog that had been badly abused and was near starvation. One day the dog found a bone, carried it to a safe spot and started gnawing away. The dog was so hungry that he chewed on the bone for a long time and got every last bit of nourishment that he could get out of it. After some time, a kind old man noticed the dog and his pathetic scrap and began quietly setting out food for it. But the poor hound was so attached to the bone that it refused to let go of it and soon starved to death. Fours are in the same predicament. As long as they believe that there is something fundamentally wrong with them, they cannot allow themselves to experience or enjoy their many good qualities. To acknowledge their good qualities would be to lose their sense of identity, which is a suffering victim, and to be without relatively consistent personal identity, which is their basic fear. Fords grow by learning to see that much of their story is just not true, or at least it's not true anymore. Their old feelings begin to fall away once they stop telling themselves their old tale. It is irrelevant to who they are right now. Next, let's look at the levels of development. First category is the healthy levels, which is a four when they are at their best, they are profoundly creative, expressing the personal and universal possibility in a work of art. Inspired, self-renewing, and regenerating, they're able to transform all their experiences into something valuable. They are self-creative. At level two, they're self-aware, introspective on the search for self. They're aware of their feelings and inner impulses. They're sensitive and intuitive, both with themselves and others. They can be gentle, tactful, and compassionate. As they move to level three, they are highly personal, individualistic, true to self, self self-revealing, emotionally honest, and humane. An ironic view of self and life, they can be serious and funny, vulnerable, and emotionally strong. But as they move into the average category at level five, They take an artistic, romantic orientation to life, creating a beautiful aesthetic environment to cultivate and prolong personal feelings. They heighten the reality through fantasy, passionate feelings, and the imagination. As they move to level five, to stay in touch with their feelings, they interiorize everything, taking everything personally. They become more self-absorbed and introverted, moody and hypersensitive, shy and self-conscious, unable to be spontaneous or to get outside of themselves. They stay withdrawn to protect their self-image and to buy time to sort out their feelings. As they move to level six, they gradually think of themselves as different from others and feel that they are exempt from living as everyone else does. They become melancholy, dreamers, disdainful, decadent, and sensual, living in a fantasy world. They may have self-pity and envy for others that leads to self-indulgence and becoming increasingly impractical, unproductive, and precious. And as they move into the unhealthy category at level seven is when their dreams fail, becoming self-inhibited and angry at self. They become depressed and alienated from self and others. They become blocked and emotionally paralyzed, ashamed of self, fatigued and unable to function. Moving on to level eight, they become tormented by self-delusional, self-contempt, self-reproaches, self-hatred, and morbid thoughts. Everything is a source of torment. Blaming others, they drive anyone away who tries to help them. And at the lowest level, level nine, they become despairing. They feel hopeless and become self-destructive, possibly abusing alcohol or drug to escape. In the extreme, they may have an emotional breakdown or suicide is likely. This generally corresponds to the avoidant, depressive, narcissistic personality disorders. But what are some of the personal growth recommendations for an Enneagram type four, the individualist? Do not pay so much attention to your feelings. They are not a true source of support for you, as you probably already know. Remember this advice. From our present perspective, we can also see that one of the most serious mistakes fours make is to equate themselves with their feelings. 
The fallacy is that to understand themselves, they must understand their feelings, particularly their negative ones, before acting. Forests do not see that self is not the same as their feelings, or the presence of negative feelings does not preclude the presence of good in themselves. Always remember that your feelings are telling you something about yourself as you are at this particular moment, not necessarily anything more than that. Avoid putting off things until you are in the right mood. Commit yourself to be productive. Meaningful work can contribute to your good and that of others, no matter how small your contribution may be. Working consistently in the real world will create a context in which you can discover yourself and your talents. Actually, you are happiest when you are working, that is, activating your potentials and realizing yourself. You will not find yourself in a vacuum or while waiting for inspiration to strike. So connect and stay connected with the real world. Self-esteem and self-confidence will develop only from having positive experiences, whether or not you believe you are ready to have them. Therefore, put yourself in the way of good. You may never feel that you are ready to take on a challenge of some sort, that you always need more time. Forts typically never feel that they are sufficiently together, but they must nevertheless have the courage to stop putting things off in life. Even if you start small, commit yourself to do something that will bring out the best in you. Next, as wholesome self-discipline takes on many forms, from sleeping regular hours to working regularly and exercising regularly. And this has a cumulative effect on strengthening who you are. Since it comes from yourself, a healthy self-discipline is not contrary to your freedom nor individuality. On the other hand, sensuality, excessive sexual experiences, alcohol, drugs, sleep, or fantasizing will have a debilitating effect on you, as you already know. Therefore, practice healthy self-discipline and then stay with it. And the final point is, avoid lengthy conversations with your imagination, particularly if you are negative, resentful, or even excessively romantic. These conversations are essentially unreal and at their best only rehearsals for actions. Although, as you know, you almost never say the things that you imagine that you will. Instead of investing time imagining your life in relationships, begin to actually live them. That's a lot to cover for type number four, the individualist. And we will conclude our focus on personality type four, the individualist. A word of encouragement for those of you who are Enneagram type number four from God's word. Philippians chapter four, verse six through eight tells us, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And I encourage you to join us again next Friday as we explore further the Enneagram on our Ask Gramps episode. We will specifically explore in depth Enneagram number five, the investigator. The information that we will explore will allow you to unlock who you really are as we travel on this trek of life and discover more about yourself and others as we impact God's kingdom. I know that you'll find these insights interesting, practical, and profitable in living a rich and satisfying life. Our next trek will be Meditation Monday, where we will help you to reflect on what is most important in life. So encourage your friends and family to join us and then come along with us on Monday for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 967 daily treks or read the associated journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. And I encourage you to subscribe to Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts so that each day's trek will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. 
I am Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you on Monday.